recording that. Do it again. Give it a little more to... The answer to everything, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. And, and people. Mm-hmm. All people. All people. Just give it a little more tit. Just give it a little more tit. Just a little more. That's what you do to uh, hide the soap stain you just put on your shirt. Well, at least it means you're clean. The- <laughs> <laughs> that being yeah, said, that's hi. 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 <laughs> I'm Allison Gwynn. I'm Amelia Cormack. And you're listening to Some Dark Color. I'd rather be in some dark color where the sun refused to shine than for you to be. Never on earth to call you mine. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. We're back. We're back for part two. Here we are. So, in the last episode, we talked about Naomi Wise. Mm-hmm. And then we learned that this man named Braxton Craven wrote a publication about 50 years after she died that was very flowery and made... Naomi out to be the purest of pure young virtuous women mm-hmm. and Jonathan Lewis um the most wretched horrible yet somehow dangerously sexy man <laughs> yep ever it should and it's the most romantic melodramatic flowery wordy yep. murder i've ever read yeah so this was the story that gained popularity and the one that people took as gospel or the truth but uh, in my research that I found, reading this lovely book, which is the main source of research, I'm going to say it again. It's called Naomi Omi Wise, Her Life, Death, and Legend. And it's by Hal E. Pugh and Eleanor Minnick Pugh. And it's an amazing Bible, <laughs> if, you, if you will, about uh, Naomi Wise. Naomi Wise's story in a nutshell is she was a servant girl. She fell in love with this dashing young man. Then they got pregnant. And the dashing young man said, no problem. We're going to save you from the shame of unwed motherhood. We're going to go elope. You got to meet me. You know, you got to meet me at night and we'll go and get married. And then no, no one's the wiser. Your virtue is intact. So she says, that sounds great. I'm in such love with you. I'm the purest of pure, beautiful Mm -hmm. Cinderella type Mm -hmm. characters. And you are Gaston, basically. And so they ride away in the middle of the night. They get to a river. He stops and basically says, I want to tell you what's going to happen right now. I'm going to drown you. And she says, oh, no, please don't do that. He does anyway. Poor Naomi is drowned in the river. He runs away. They find him and bring him back. He is jailed and he escapes. And then he escapes for several years, gets married, has children. Then they finally find him because of the popularity of the song, the murder ballad that we, that is going around. And they bring him back, but they don't have enough evidence to convict him because so many years has gone by. So they try to try him for breaking jail, which they do. And then he dies a couple day, you, no, days, and then he dies a couple years later. Um, being haunted by Naomi's ghost. The end. Or so we thought. Mm -hmm. So this was all based on a publication um, that Braxton Craven wrote, an old white professor from North Carolina. I am reading this beautiful book by the Pew Minnicks. I learned that there is documentation that was discovered much later that finds that Maybe he embellished a bit on some of the hmm. on some of the accuracies there. I um, that. So that's what we're gonna discuss in this episode. Great. And then we're gonna follow it up with a version of the murder ballad that I wrote where Naomi gets her justice. So let's 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 go. Let's do this. Here we go. The true story. <laughs> So, there are several documents that tell the true tale of Naomi. 
one document has the unfortunate name of a bastardy bond. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's not that this bond is a dick. It's not. It's not just like, <laughs> this is bastardy bond. No. This document revealed that Naomi Wise already was a mother by the time she met John Lewis. Oh. So she was not a pure virginal 19-year-old that was innocent as driven snow and knew no wrong. And, you know. Yeah. So she had children before John Lewis got her pregnant. Mm. So gasp. Yeah. Clutch your pearls. Yeah. Um, you can't see it, but I'm clutching them. What a scandal. He. Back then, women having children without being married was looked on with an incredible amount of disdain and the shame. Oh, the shame. However, it is documented that these bastardy bonds, which, to quote the Minic Pew book, when a court was notified of the impending birth of a bastard child, that's the legal term, bastard child, that they used back then, a legal process was set in motion which required the mother to show up before two justices of the peace (gasps) to report the child's paternity, end quote. So I'm pregnant. This is the child's baby daddy. Um, And one of these bastardy bonds exists for Naomi's second child. Uh, so does that mean that that she would get it was like a child support situation? That it was kind of like that. It was like yeah, right. this is the this is the father of my child. They have to pay. They have to pay a bond. They have to pay a bond. Right, 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 right. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. So the state doesn't have to. I mean, but that that still that would take a lot of courage to yeah do that. Yeah. That would be so intimidating. It's so intimidating, not only for the woman, but mo- mostly for the woman. Yeah. But it, the man has to come forth and own yeah. up to it. And how many did. times do you, how many times would she be like, yeah, it's him? And he'd be like, no, nope, sorry. No, no, really. Yeah. There's not like there's, you know, DNA evidence to prov- provide yeah. proof. Um, so one of these bachelor bonds exists for Naomi's second child. Uh-huh. So she's had two kids right. out of wedlock. So the second child was born in 1803, fathered by a hatter named Benjamin Sanders. Before that, she had a baby named Nancy. Hi, friends. Allison checking in here with a little addendum. I was able to find Nancy Wise's bastardy bond. Um, So there was one for Omi Wise's first child born child, Nancy, and it states that Joseph Bulla, B-U-L-L-A, was the father of Nancy, and that was in Randolph County, North Carolina, in 1820, and if you want to check it, it's in the State Archives of North Carolina, so there you go. In 1798, but her father, Nancy's father, isn't known since no bastardy bond exists, and she was unmarried. Right. But ha- wait, how did we learn about her first kid? Well, uh-huh. UCLA unearthed a document collected in their archives from a girl named Mary Woody. To quote the Minic Pew book, a young Quaker girl from Alamance County. And this document was handwritten in a book known as a commonplace book. Uh-huh. What is that? A commonplace book is like a scrapbook of sorts. And people in America in the 19th century wrote down things that occurred from publications or recipes or clippings from newspapers if they got them, letters, and they basically documented their life at that time. Oh, okay. So it's like, yeah, it's a scrapbook. Yeah. Okay. Mary Woody was most likely a young girl and copied a very long, or she... I don't know if she copied it or she wrote it. Right. A very long poem entitled, quote, A True Account of Naomi Wise, spelled N-A-Y-O-M-Y. Oh, bless. Wise. Yep. Which was, according to the Minute Pew book, based on testimony of Mary Adams. Do you remember Mary Adams? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mary Adams was Naomi's... um, Boss. Boss, basically, yeah. yeah. Um, a true account of Naomi Wise, which was, according to the Minute Pew book, based on testimony of Mary Adams during the coroner's inquest. Oh. So Mary Adams, again being Naomi's mistress or boss, uh, she trusted and worked for. This poem describes in great detail Naomi Wise's story. It's very long, 
<laughs> very, very long. Right. It's often misspelled. Yeah. Uh, but is it that crazy ye olde weldy spelling? Or I don't is know. it, it that, spells yeah. country C U N T R Y. <laughs> so I'll just say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry, Mary it seems Woody, like... what? She was a sassy girl. She was. <laughs> often misspelled full poem filled in details such as Naomi's children, where she came from. And the details of the coroner's inquest, which were backed up by other legal documents, such as the first bastardy, well, the bastardy bond for her second child, that leads researchers to believe that this very long poem is a more accurate story than the one that Braxton Craven wrote. Yeah. A picture of this witty poem, as Minnick Pugh book calls it. And we're going to include a picture of that poem on the Instagram where it spells country (laughs) (laughs) C. I'm 12 years old. Please do. <laughs> and she was probably 12 years old, so. I mean. Relatable. And it, it, the poem is really fascinating. It not only, in, in this book that I read, it has the full poem. And it's really fascinating because it uh, not only tells us the truer story of Naomi, but tells us w- that true crime has always been an interesting topic of, for young people and old alike. Mm. Because, you know, Mary Woody was most likely a young girl. Yeah. And for her to com- copy or make up that poem in a commonplace book, and it goes on and on. So mm. whew, that says something about well done, Mary fascination of it. Yeah. So the facts. The Woody poem suggests that Naomi came from nearby Hyde Country, North Carolina. Country meaning county. Yeah. I think. Uh, And she came to Randolph County, where she worked for the Adams family, uh, (laughs) five years earlier. So, she'd only been in the county. She'd only been working in Randolph County for five years before she died. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, We know that she has two children because the poem eloquently states, quote, And by some person was defiled. And so brought forth a bastard child. B a s t u r d. Mm-hmm. Bastard mm-hmm. child. Bastard. It was yep. not long till she another that might be called a bastard's brother. End quote. Uh-huh. The poem suggests that before she came to work for the Adams family, she went from one house to another, working as a servant to feed her children. So this is very different than the. Pure Cinderella-esque orphaned Braxton Craven girl that yeah. was described. So she sounds like she was a single mom. Yeah. Trying to make ends meet. Trying to make ends meet. Yep. In, and it's ten times harder because back then she had the shame yeah. of being a single mother. Yeah. I have no doubt. I, I almost am I'm very convinced that Braxton Hicks, <laughs> that Braxton Craven, <laughs> wrote, wrote her, her to clean up the story. Yeah, the, the Christian Puritan standards, so the readers would sympathize with Naomi and not villainize her for having children outside of marriage. Because yeah. back then, if you had kids outside of marriage, it's about as bad as murdering someone in a river. Yeah, which yeah. is awful. Yeah, this episode is brought to you by Planned Parenthood. <laughs> yep, I hope you have a better plan than this. <laughs> We're gonna have to make T-shirts. To me, this lady sounds like a warrior that's had a bad luck. Just bad luck. Yeah. Or bad taste in men. Or, and she or, just wants to enjoy her life and just, like, yeah. you know, have a good time. And that, you know, that unfortunately, protection was not, not frequently a thing. used. Use the rhythm method. Yeah. I mean, they did. It is interesting because there have been devices that have been around. These but men were, have no rhythm. Yeah, well, that too. Um, <laughs> but there are like condom sheath type things were being used, but they're not f- few and far were between. They in America, I don't know, but like sailors had, mm. like you'd have. There are yeah. devices like you can sure. look up since the like. I, I could be wrong, but I'm. I think like the seventeen eighteen hundred. Like there, there were things that were around. Yeah, but. You know, yeah, it's not... but then acquiring those things exactly uh, probably would carry its own stigma and yeah, why bother? When exactly, you can just, exactly. Just and throw, the fact that she's... why bother when you can just drown people in rivers? Yeah. I mean, well, and get away yeah. with it. Well, I mean, but the fact that she has survived two childbirths, <laughs> she just wants to like go yeah. out and live her life. Oh, poor thing. 
Have some so, good times. That's a strong woman right there. Yeah. Ugh. Lizzo needs to write a song about this woman. Yeah. Anyway, the Woody poem says that she came to work for the Adams family. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And yes, they were kind Quakers that provided her work and kept a roof over her and one of her kids' heads. Yeah. The older kid, Nancy, was made to live with nearby neighbors. I guess because uh, the courts decided that she couldn't take care of them both. So yeah. she went, Nancy or, went to go live with another neighbors. Or maybe the Adams couldn't, because as we heard in the description, they were not modest, emphatically rich. Not emphatically rich. Um, well, they can't take so they might, they might have, they might have said, hey, look, we can't take on both, but if we'll keep one and need someone to live with someone right. else. So to not have one of your kids living with you, yeah. but they're in the neighbors and she would visit a lot. Yeah. The Woody poem says, in 1806, the year she was overcome again, and by a Lewis was defiled, and a third time became with child. So Maybe. this one says that in 1806, she got pregnant with John Lewis's baby. Right. The Woody poem refers to John Lewis as a, quote, sprightly youth and a youngster. Huh. Quote, which suggests to the Pew Minics that wrote the book that John Lewis might have been younger than Naomi. Yeah, because isn't she not in the in the Brax in the Craven version? She's nineteen. She's right? nineteen. Okay. Quote: Jonathan was born in April seventeen eighty three and would have been twenty three years old in eighteen oh six. Oh, so he's not. So he's not. Yeah. yeah, he's not that. He's not a baby. Yeah. Naomi's exact age is unrecorded. But circumstantial evidence suggests that she was, in fact, at least as old, if not older, than Jonathan. Right. It appears likely that she was at least 23 to 26 years old in 1806. Okay. So if she was, she she might have been a bit older yeah. than what Braxton Craven, yeah. the damsel that Braxton Craven wrote. Yeah. And John Lewis wasn't an older man, which would make him more powerful. Yeah. Lewis, though, seems to be more accurately portrayed by Braxton Craven. Oh, which is interesting, weird. yeah. Uh, a historian of the time said his family, to quote the Minute Pew book, was destitute of religious culture or moral principle. End oh. quote. Jonathan also had an uncle that beat his wife <gasps> and also beat and raped a 16 year old girl. Oh, Jesus. So not exactly being raised in a culture that respects women. No. Uh, Sheriff Isaac Lane described him in the Minnick Pew book as, and this is Jonathan, as, quote, a man between 25 and 30 years of age. Okay. Tall, slim, 5 feet 10, or 12 inches high. Tw I'm sure. <laughs> so 6 foot. <laughs> close to 6 5 foot. feet 10 and 12 inches high, black hair, and rather of dark skin. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that suggests. No. But Randolph County, this is different because in the Braxton Hicks, Braxton Hicks, <laughs> I keep on doing it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen to you. No, it's okay. No, it does. It, ha it actually, side note, it does happen like already in the third trimester. Whoa. Um, 32 weeks as of today. Uh, oh, Stay as of, in there. No, um, she was kicking. She was, she was responding a little bit in the first one. Uh-oh. Yeah. She was like, I object. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So John, Randolph County appointed John Lewis as a constable in 1805. Oh, so he's a policeman. Yeah. Wow. That was left out. In the that Braxton was Craven left version. out. So he was appointed a constable in 1805, the year before he got Naomi pregnant. Huh. A constable, according to the Minnick Pew book, was a bonded public representative, conservator of the peace, <laughs> And Minister of Justice for Randolph County, end quote. Wow. So. Well, that would mean Craven would present police in a bad light. Yeah. God forbid you, mm. you do that. So I'm sure he's Even gonna, back then. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to uphold all these standards of. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yep. No corruption at all, right? Nope. Uh, in 1807, he starts a second career assisting an attorney by the name of Benjamin Elliott. Okay. Okay. So he gets her pregnant. <gasps> Hedy's dad. Yeah. This this timing. Oh, no, sister. No, sister. 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 So this timing doesn't make sense to me, though. Yeah. If she got pregnant in 1806, he starts his clerkship and meets Hetty in 1807, 
and he's she's murdered in 1808. She would have to That's a long pregnancy. Yeah. That's a long pregnancy. I don't know. Yeah. Could it be that the tellings of a a, a young girl might not be accurate? From the inquest, potential. Mm, Who knows? He starts his second career in 1807, assisting an attorney by the name of Benjamin Elliott. We know this. And he would lately, later publicly pursue Benjamin Elliott's sister, Hetty. There we go. Sorry, and, preempted. <laughs> <laughs> while privately getting Naomi pregnant. Marrying Hetty, which would, would indeed be a good step for him socially and be good for his career, while being with Naomi, an unwed mother of two bastard children, that's the legal term back then, mm-hmm. uh, and a servant wasn't exactly a step up, really. Yeah. So. How did Naomi and Jonathan meet? Not really clear, but it is known that Jonathan broke his journey around where the Adamses lived at his boss's father's house. Okay. Okay. So, Benjamin Elliot is yes. his boss. Yes. And Benjamin Elliot's dad yes. is none other than the neighbor oh. of the Adamses that house... Naomi's <gasps> daughter. Oh my God, Nancy! Wow! Oh, what a tangled web we weave! Truly. So he was breaking his journey at his boss's dad's, dad's house, house, where Naomi's daughter lived. <gasps> that's that's bold, and that's likely how they met. That she right. was visiting. Yeah, she was visiting her daughter. Yeah, and they met like that. So thank you for breaking that down for me. Could you no, see the glazed look my in my brain, eye? <laughs> I'm sure my brain was going, wait, what? Huh? That's so, well, okay. According to the Woody poem, the Woody poem, uh, Naomi told Jonathan she was expecting his baby and was telling a lot of other people, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and Jonathan surprisingly didn't like this at all. <laughs> Guess who knocked me up? <laughs> she said. Yeah, oh, have you heard? <laughs> In fact, the rumor got back to the Elliot family. Uh oh. And when they asked Jonathan about it, so Hetty asked Jonathan about it, uh-huh. he said it was, quote, base and malicious slander, end quote. Mm-hmm. And he then tried, which is like the Braxton. Yeah, I was going to say that, that we I heard mm-hmm. that phrase. Yes. And he then tried to pay Naomi to keep it quiet, to pay her okay. off. I mean,. Mm. I might take it if I. I were mean, her. listen. Uh, but the poem says no. Naomi told everyone that Jonathan tried to pay her off. Not only did he get me pregnant, but he tried to pay me off. Naomi, Naomi, Naomi. I know. Read the room. It's not. No. 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 Um, so not exactly the romantic tryst where they were both yeah. in love. That Braxton Craven yeah. writes that they were both in love immediately, and at first their love was pure and true, and and then. The mother comes along, remember? The, yeah, 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 yeah. Jonathan's mother comes along and whispers in his ear that she's not the right one. Yeah, yeah. None of that happened. <laughs> so I guess it was secretive and, and yeah. um, carnal from the get-go, and not a lot of romance was involved, I'm guessing. Yeah, but also just the fact that she's out there telling everyone everything. Yeah, why are you telling everyone? What are you doing? But I guess, I mean, maybe she was like, I'm telling everybody, so, she, she so he has to, to marry something. me. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, you've only got so many tools in your, you've only got so many weapons in your arsenal. And it's then Jonathan threatens Naomi with murder. Wow. So in this one, she, he's like, I'm going to kill you. Jesus. So, yeah. The quote, the Woody poem, he threatened that he would her kill. She disregarded what he said. Of his threats, seemed not afraid. End quote. How do you disregard someone going, okay, I guess I'll just kill you then. Because you're not wanting to show them that you're intimidated. I love him. No. <laughs> no, I can see her being like, I mean, don't you try that shit with me, sir. Red flag. But yeah. Get out. Take yeah. money. If he's Take threatening them. to kill you. Yeah. Or you go around and tell everyone that he's telling you, because that seems to be a modus operandi. Be I'm like, he threatened to kill me. She should have done that. Yeah. Well. Finally, when nothing else worked, threats, threats on her life, I guess, didn't work. He made the false promise of marriage. Now, we have to remember that Jonathan is also a constable, and he would probably lose his job if he had to fill out one of those bastardy bonds. Yeah. So, they they did meet at night, but at a nearby Quaker schoolhouse. 
that overlooked uh, the Adams's house so that he could see when she was leaving and if she was leaving by herself. Right. Do you know what's crazy? Baby girl is like kicking, going, no, 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 don't do don't it. Do it. Now. It's crazy. She's like, no, no. As soon as you said red flag, she was like, red flag. no. <laughs> anyway. Yes. No, it's crazy. Out of the mouth of, or out of out the, the feet, feet of babes. Babe. <laughs> like the Braxton Craven account, Jonathan, in reality, told Naomi to tell no one, but she confided in her boss, the house mistress, Mary Adams. She, no doubt, trusted Mary and saw her somewhat as a mother figure. Mary told her not to go, according to her, the coroner's testimony. Yeah. Mary, rightly so, didn't trust Jonathan and warned Naomi. Oh, well, Mary. Just another one, of, another red flag. Don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm victim blaming, I guess, but... No, but it's also she, that thing of, like... He said, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, and it's that thing of, like, you got to trust your gut sometimes. I mean, there's a lot of times in life, and I learned this the you hard way, where... Just... It, yeah, I know. She's, like... She's, she's like, like, kicking you. Yeah. Right in it. No, it's... There are times, as I've learned in my journey in life, where we're told to trust our gut, and that. But sometimes it's like your gut is going to protect you. So that doubt means don't kind of stuff, which is not always. Sometimes it comes from a fear-based place, so it's not necessarily always the right, right thing. But in this case, it's like, would there be no alarm bells going off at all, or take someone with you? Maybe she's so desperate. Well, there is that. I mean, she, God, she's a single mom with. Yeah. Two and one on the way. If I, she might have to move again. If, yeah. And starting all over again with two. Oof. Yep. I wonder if she told, Naomi told Mary that she was pregnant. Yeah. Maybe she said we're going to get married, but didn't mention the pregnancy. Yeah. Because I, I wouldn't be telling my boss. No. And especially if you can't. If she's you a can't keep. <laughs> yeah. Well. Religious lady. You know. And you can't keep your two kids together as it is. Yeah. So anyway, Naomi ignored all of these red flags and they rode off on April 5th, 1807 to Naomi's doom. So we don't unfortunately have Jonathan's account of how he murdered Naomi, like the Braxton Craven version. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, That was wild. Yeah. But we do have an account of the coroner's inquest, which happens to be a very interesting process. So apparently when someone is murdered back then, the coroner shows up to the spot. A seemingly mini court case happens at the scene of the crime. Huh. We, we do have coroner's inquests in Australia to this day. And it happens at the scene of the crime? Not at the scene of the crime. No, no, no. It happens much later. And it's usually, they like in, in cold cases, um, they will often have inquests much later after the time if it looks like the first... They don't like families don't agree with the initial findings. So that's what they did with um if you've listened to the teacher's pet, they had a coronial inquest in the nineties. Um there's another great um uh it's on Hulu done by ABC. I think it's not Never Let Me Go, but something like that. And it actually all takes place in my hometown. Um and it's an American guy, American gay guy who was found naked at the bottom of a cliff and his brother basically fights for 30 years to get them to do but it's yeah coroner's inquests are that's what we do yeah it's it still happens today um but it's a different it's the same thing but at a different stage this one surprises me because it happens right at the scene of the crime and well i guess if you have no way to preserve evidence as well in this time all of what happened at the coroner's inquest is based on mary's testimony at that inquest and so would that mean that she's there at the scene of the crime? Little Mary. She, Mary, because Mary. Because I thought I was picturing in my head that it was later in the courtroom. but Because, you know, now. Mary leads the search party in the Braxton Craven uh, version. And I guess she did. Oh, no, thing. sorry. I mean little Mary Woody. No, no. Mary Woody was not there. This is a different Mary. Yes. Mary Adams. Mary Adams that? was at the, yes. But, but this, so she's, so Woody, the Woody poem is based on. Mary's. That's right. Mary Adams. Sorry. Excuse me. Yes. I follow. I follow. I follow. Which, which Woody would have then looked up later on. I, yes, I guess. Right. That's where I was getting confused. Cause no, I was no, like, no. Was, okay. Thank you for clearing that up. So Lewis was found. Yes. With a young girl named Martha on his lap. Ew. Uh, and brought to the deep river bank where Naomi was laid out on a flat rock. 
and that flat rock exists to this day and uh, we'll show a picture of that and I do like in the song how they call the it a Instagram. plank a plank yes <laughs> I think it le- rhymed with bank. sank or bank <laughs> The Davis brothers, remember the lady and her sons yes. that lived by the river, heard screams, had found her in the reeds and fished her out and lay her there. According to the Minnick Pew book, uh, quote, her corpse was left lying on a large flat rock at the edge of the riverbank where it could be view- viewed by the jurors. So there's jurors. Oof, brutal. End quote. <laughs> there's jurors at the scene of the crime. Yeah. Uh, quote, the coroner held the inquest at the riverbank with the quartz still displayed on the flat rock. So little flat ground on the riverbed that there was only room for the jury, coroner, and witnesses. I mean, you would be very difficult to be impartial if you're out there with the body. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you find any measure of impartiality? No, no. Spectators gathered on a steep bank, looking down as if it were a theater. So there are spectators now. There's a ritual, this is interesting, requiring the accused murderer to touch the corpse in a, quote, practice known as cruentation. C-R-U-E-N-T-A-T-I-O-N. I've never heard that phrase before. Wow. Cruentation or ordeal by touch, end quote. Huh. And that's based on the belief that a suspect's guilt could be confirmed by his reaction to the corpse. They didn't know about psychopaths back then. Mm -hmm. And by, whoa, this would get, and by the how the corpse responded Uh, uh, to the murderer's uh, touch. What? What? Uh, Yeah. Uh, Thinking, quote, the victim's spirit would feel (gasps) such indignation that the corpse would react by moving or manifesting bodily fluids. I mean, as we know, the body expresses bodily fluids at time of death. Right, so you're screwed. (laughs) You better hope that doesn't happen, like, right when you touch the body, if you didn't do it. Um, So jurors would look for any movement of the corpse or foam at the nostrils or mouth. Wow. Okay. The Woody poem goes on to give a play-by-play of what happened at the inquest, who testified, what they said, And a warrant exists signed by the coroner. Don't get it confused. The coroner's name is John Craven. Oh, okay. There's a lot of Cravens. Just two, actually. Uh, (laughs) Confirming that the coroner found that John Lewis had indeed murdered Naomi Wise and was to be jailed. John Lewis, also true to the Braxton Hicks, no, the Braxton Craven (laughs) version, John Lewis did indeed escape jail with the aid of some of his police friends. Uh, and he escaped, there we go. married, and had children in Indiana. I think the Braxton Craven for this said Ohio. Ohio. I mean, Midwest. Let's just yeah. call it the Midwest. Before they could bring find him and bring him back to North Carolina. He was indeed acquitted of the murder. So they tried him. Well, He was acquitted of the murder due to lack of evidence. So that's interesting because they, there's no mention of the horse hairs like there is in the right. Braxton Craven version. And there is no reports as to whether or not he was haunted by Naomi's ghost. I mean, no, but, I'd, I'd like to think it was. But it is, it is interesting that the only evidence they've got is, not, is there's not, there's not, not like, it's him touching the body. Yeah. And if he's a psychopath, which by the sounds of things he is, not to d- like, diagnose, but. So he did touch her and she, he showed no expression. Yeah. And that's true. So what happened at the Braxton Craven Bridges? So yes, that happened. And then he he turns up with Martha on his seat. But that's what I'm saying. Like that he would be. I mean, we we know how fallible um, lie detector tests are. Sure. That they they you can beat them. <laughs> and but you know that's the thing. Like the someone can pretend. The lie detector test is here. Lay your hands on this corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally, that's what I'm saying. Like the corpse is the light is the the, the lie detector test. Well, nope, didn't jump. So. No, nope, yeah. Uh, and you looked really cool coming. I mean, but that is the only that you can't convict someone on that on their right. lack of reaction. Yep. Uh, there's not enough. There's not enough evidence. They said most, of, and they said most of the the witnesses. I'm say, I'm guessing the the people that live by the yeah, river the Davis died or moved away. Yeah, and the fact. <laughs> the horse prints that, yeah, as we discussed. the horse out in the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Um, 
was it CODIS? Is CODIS the the um the database for fingerprints? I no. think so. Yeah. Quoting my my Law and Order. That's it. Um, dun dun. <laughs> Yep. And then came the murder ballad. Folklorist Frank C. Brown is quoted in the Pew Minnick book as calling the ballad of Omi Wise, quote, North Carolina's principal single contribution to American folk song, end quote. Folklorist scholar Eleanor Long Wilgus had collected 147 various texts and fragments of the ballad. So there's uh, 147 texts of it wow uh, that was collected i guess from oral tradition yeah so yeah they dictated it down into text not a talk about uh the frankie and johnny yeah. ballad more recorded actual audio versions of that exist i think because it happened later yeah so in this one 147 various texts mm -mm. exist of the song but not a lot of audio recordings yeah right so it's difficult to find the author of the original ballad. Randolph County lore suggests several. There's Elizabeth Pennington Beeson, who was thought by many to be the first author. So yay, a woman writer. Yeah. <laughs> and they suggested that she wrote the ballad with her son, Levi, shortly after 1807. Okay. So shortly after she died. Yeah. Um, and she is listed as a witness for the prosecution in Lewis's murder trial. Oh, interesting. So she would know, I guess. That would be a pretty authentic account, I yeah. would say. And others say it was written by a different Beeson, Mary Pendleton Beeson, to be exact. There are loose connections to the Beesons, knowing the Elliots, so Joseph Elliot being housing Naomi's daughter, Nancy. Yeah. And then Benjamin Elliot is his son. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. Which is Jonathan's boss. Yes. So there seems to be validity on both of the ends of these, of who was the originator. Yeah. And yet another version of the ballad exists that was passed down through the Sarah Pugh Brown family in Randleman, North Carolina. And the Pews wrote uh -huh. the book. Ah, there we go. Naomi Wise, Her Life, Death, and Legend. There we and go. There's a part in this book where it lines up like stanza by stanza each version. Wow. Which I in comparison. So that's interesting if you want to see that. If you want to geek out about that for yeah. a while. No doubt Naomi's story would have been lost forever if it had not been romanticized by Braxton Craven and making his wildly <laughs> fantastical story. But I find, personally, the Woody poem more fascinating. Yeah. Because it's pretty, it's real. It's yeah. It's telling a story about a real woman. Yeah. And not a victim. Yeah. I mean, she was a victim, but she, she's not painted as such. No, you know? and she doesn't need to be, she's not pure as the driven snot. You know, it's yeah. this, it's the, the whole Madonna prone Ugh. complex that we constantly come across. That it's right. like. You know, Women you're either all three. Yeah, exactly. And the 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 fact that in order for someone to, you know, the vic but it's like we see in crime now, you know, the victims that get airplay are the children with blonde hair and blue eyes, the white, you know, like yeah, the white people. Yeah, literally because, and it's so fascinating. I've been going back and watching old and the non-sex workers. Yeah, and non exactly. And I've been going back and watching old Law and Order episodes, and it is so fascinating. These shows, they really the way that the different kinds of victims are portrayed, but it's always we have sympathy with a blonde haired, blue eyed child, mm. like uh, a Kaylee Anthony or a. John Bonet Ramsey, Ugh. you know, it's, it's, yeah, that's who gets the sympathy. So let's paint them as, as virginal and perfect as possible. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no doubt that's what he did. Braxton Hicks Craven over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, to sell a good story. Yeah. Don't let the truth get in the way. No, I mean, story. we are finding that really repeatedly yeah. being in each of these stories that we're telling. Uh, it's. It's, it's, it's. Yeah. And whereas we're, as we found this one, the truth is far more interesting. Oh, far more. Yes. Uh, so a strong woman trying to stand up for herself, stubborn and trying to do right by her children. Yeah. That's what I had in mind when I read the Woody poem 
and then it drove me to write this version of where Naomi gets stands up for herself. No, I I, I think Allison, you did a remarkable job oh, on this song, and also just telling that incredible story. So let's listen to it right now. Yeah. What? Shoved her beneath the 
water and she began to sink. Her head went down, her feet swept up to float up at the top. He surely meant to drown her and no he wouldn't stop. Oh me, oh my, thought oh me wise. I will not die tonight. You thought that you could kill me here, but you will not prevail, my dear. Oh me, oh my, said oh me wise. You will not have your way. I won't bury you. her legs around his neck and tightly she did squeeze forced him below the current that rippled with the breeze for she was strong and sturdy no damsel frail was she she drowned that rascal Lupus as dead he could be. She rode back on his pony and told the sick sad tale. How Lewis tried to kill her and oh how he had failed. The town they rallied round her. Oh me was justified in drowning John Lewis, who almost made her die. They helped her with her babies. She brought them up so strong. John Lewis thought he had her there, but oh, how he was wrong. A brave, stout-hearted woman, a winner all along. Let's hear it for Naomi, the hero of the song. All right. Oh me, oh my, thought oh me wise. I will not die tonight. You thought you could just kill me here, but you Oh me, oh my, said oh me wise, you will not have your way. I won't bury you, I'll bury you here beneath the waves. Oh my God. So good at um, acoustic guitar. No, oh, my absolute pleasure. Um, it was such a joy to, to to sing that song. I really, I really dug it. And Alison was like, "Is it too long?" I said, "No, it's not." <laughs> and friends, uh, murder ballads are, I guess, really long. Yeah, I you just gotta tell the story. It is also the fact, like, when she sent me a little demo of it, and I was like, "The turn in the middle <laughs> is so brilliant because it's so gentle and beautiful and." Just going along, and then her power thighs. <laughs> she strangles a man with his <laughs> with her thighs. I just think with her it's thunderous brilliant. thighs. It made me so happy as I was sitting there listening to her. I was like, "Oh my god, this is brilliant!" Do not cut <laughs> one single word of this. Well, that it's is genius. where women hold most of their strength. We all get our thighs. Yeah, statistically. There we go. Yeah, they learn something new every day. Yeah. Teaching me all the things of my friend, you know. like cruentation. Cruent, cruentation. Today's secret word <laughs> in Kiwi's Playhouse is cruentation. <laughs> Every time you hear that word, scream. That's going to be good for trivia. Cruentation. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that would make me scream. Yeah. Like a dead body scream, you're in trouble. Oh, yeah.
Oh, that's so creepy. Anyway. It really is. But it's also, I was thinking as you, as you, um, as you were telling me about what that is, and just thinking about Braxton Craven's version of like, he strokes her face. I was like, there is no way that a man that's psychopathic would have stroked her face. Ugh. He would have been like, poke, 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 poke. poke, poke. He's lucky that he didn't do it with a stick. I Ugh. mean. Yuck. Poor Naomi, man. Poor Naomi. She's just trying to have a little fun and yeah. have a little romance in her life. And but Also, some things are better kept to oneself. As well, sometimes if you if you've been threatened with murder, maybe I think that I don't know why she know. didn't tell everyone that he was threatening to kill her. Yeah, that's the one that that's the one you tell. Yeah, he's trying to kill me. Yeah, that way it's out. Yeah, around that he is trying to kill me. If I end up dead somewhere, say in a river. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm wondering if she that did. Guy did it. Because I'm wondering if she did say something to someone, but that she just wasn't believed. But Mary seems like she believed. Like she knew. Mary knew what was going on. Mary I, Adams. I think Naomi, when she was telling her, was trying to paint a a brighter picture. Yeah. Like, We're going to get married. It's yeah. happening. Or maybe my my Braxton. I've been Braxton Craven too much, <laughs> and I'm thinking she's wanting a happily ever after. Yeah. But uh, I don't know how someone yeah. threatens to kill you, how can you can go. But you still want to marry me, right? I'll still get on the back of a horse with you. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. That part I kind of I kind of believe because of the nature of an elopement, it would be like we'll we'll go because isn't that what speaking of Jane Austen, isn't that what happens in one of the Don't they doesn't someone go off and yes. get, get married? Yes, Wickham. Yeah. Wickham and um Lydia. Yeah. Lydia. Anyway, someone will inform us of our decision, our, our wrong, wrongly um, quoting Jane Austen. Yeah. What, Alison, thank you so much. That was so fantastic. What a wild, um, wild ride. The song was great. The research was great. The story was great. <laughs> thank you so much for sticking with us for these two thank parts. Thank you, friends. I hope you enjoyed it. First of all, everything is being uh, recorded and edited by the amazing Alison Gwynn, so thank you so much for so all your So if there's problems, home. it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yes, you can find us um, at Cormac and Gwynn, all one word. The and is spelled out, not an ampersand, um, at, on Instagram, or you can email us, cormacandgwynn at gmail.com. Yeah, we're video recording as well. Um, yeah. Um. Oh, so you can I, also. Um. Yes. If I haven't said this is the first time I've said it, but we have a YouTube channel as well. Yeah. So if you just search Cormac and Gwyn, we have a whole bunch of songs that we recorded, live performances. Yeah. So please, please come see us and check them out. And yeah, we we can't wait to hear from you. See we're all the goodies enjoying. on our Instagram. Yeah. According like pictures and things. Yeah. Uh, of Naomi's grave. Where oh they yeah. Get, they get the year of her her death wrong. Tombstone. So oh, that's, that's, so that's unfortunate. I mean, the bare minimum. <laughs> Just the bare minimum. Uh, I'm finding that as I'm pregnant, I'm very, my impatience with her people not. Bullshit just meter is like. Doing their bare minimum of their job. Like, it's driving You had one job. You had one job. It's driving me quite I crazy. I love it. Bring it. Bring anyway, it. so yeah, so we learned. We, once again, we have learned. Do not go down by a river. Don't do it. And don't if you do on. have a life jacket on at all don't times. Don't go at night. Don't go at night. Don't, don't go on the back of a horse. With anyone that you think is is looks remotely like Gaston, don't and do it. If they ask you how you want to die, say death by nachos. <laughs> <laughs> Death by ten billion dollars, please. Just um, in my bank account. That's how I want to die. Death by not being on the back of this horse with you. Death by you getting the hell away from me. Yep. Of old age. Yeah. <laughs> oh, friends. Oh, so thank okay. you for listening to this madness, and I, we hope you'll continue to listen to even more. Oh, another thing. Yes. Please, if you have access and are listening to on the iTunes, rate, review, and subscribe. Yeah. Because that's the thing that people oh my we God, need. You said the words. I did the that's thing. That's fun. I like it. Preferably nice things. If you have constructive feedback, let us know in an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we wish you well, friends. And uh, 
we hope that you don't find yourself in some dark color. <laughs> Bye-bye.